Hello, uh, my name is Gian Pietro Balia. Uh, I'm one of the programmers of the uh, Black Knights Film Festival. And um, I'm here with the uh, director Hadi Gandor, and uh, we're going to have an informal chat about his film, uh, which is going to have a world premiere in the uh, competition here in Tallinn. It's uh, a debut, uh, directorial debut, and the film is The Traveler. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, as the title suggests, um, the film is about a travel, a journey. Um, the interesting thing is that the main character works in a travel agency, uh, but he himself has never left the country. So he knows very well um, a lot of destinations, everything which is in the catalog. He can describe every street of the destinations that is uh, settling in the plans to the um, clients, but it's never actually experienced that in first hand. So where, uh, this is a very great idea and it's kind of like the, the basis of a really great comedy, but at the same time, you have a very dramatic approach in it also. Uh, it's a whole journey, it's a whole, um, uh, sort of journey that the, the, the character has to go through both personal, internal, and geographical in a way as well. So what was your inspiration for this story? You yourself have traveled a lot, you studied abroad, you left your country, came back. So if you can, if you can talk a little bit about that, your personal experience and how that influenced also um, the, let's say, writing of the character and of the story. Well, actually, like I was influenced by several several things on a personal level and also on an event that actually happened. Um, on a personal level for me, I've, I've, my whole life I've been traveling. I've never really, I'm Lebanese, um, I'm also Belgian, I, have, I lived in Belgium, I lived in Jordan, I lived in Dubai, I kept, kept on moving uh, because of uh, personal reasons with my family and just, and, and I never really knew what home, home really meant. Where is my home? Is it Lebanon? I'm, who am I? And so this I've constantly faced this question. This has been a central question in my life. And so I found that writing this film was a way to kind of explore who, who, who am I? Where, where do I belong? Um, but using it from the shoes of someone who's never traveled, kind of like the opposite situation of mine because it's experienced things for the, for the first time. And so these feelings that I have merges with the story of this person that I, um, I used to work in Disney World and there was this man who came from Lebanon, and he worked with me over there. He came from the mountains, and he, um, he was married with a child, and he's never traveled his life before, never. And he was there, and he was just totally amazed by America, just like, wow, what is this? But he was a very quiet person, and he would never express his emotions fully, uh, but you felt that there was like a, a, something inside of him that wasn't right. I could just feel it. And he would never talk. He would never talk about his wife and child. He would, he would just like be silent. And this silence intrigued me. And I was totally obsessed with this character. I just wanted to know what is he up to? What is he thinking? What? And then I found out uh, a couple of years later that he divorced. He uh, left his wife and child, and he was living a miserable life in America illegally. And that to me was like, wow! Like travel. You know, you can either find yourself or you can t completely lose yourself. And that was that was the pillar. That was really what I wanted to. It, to, to explore in the film, yeah. That is actually a great point, in a sense how um, traveling can lead you somewhere or it can kind of get you lost if you don't find your path, if you don't find, um, if you don't have a clear destination. And uh, the, beauty, the, the, the beauty, beauty of this film also is that, as you, as you said, you yourself um, you traveled a lot, you lived in many places, and I think it's a very common thing of our generation. Mm, having parents coming from different countries, or I myself, um, half Italian, half Swiss, I lived for the past 10 years abroad, so, uh, yeah, I'm Italian, but, you know, uh, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, it's very, uh, these boundaries, the geographical boundaries are just very hard to grasp and to understand. Um, so it's very interesting, the social study also that you do with the film, because um, throughout the film, there are many characters um, that sort of represent a specific type of migrant or a specific type of uh, dream that a person develops 
when he goes abroad or a specific type of lifestyle that a migrant uh, develops for himself to kind of feel safe or to not even to survive but to kind of get going in his new life. Uh, so it's very interesting and if you could speak a little bit about the different expectations that each and every character has. Um, there's somebody who opens a restaurant and feels really good in, in that small environment and tries to recreate a sort of welcoming uh, approach, uh, despite he's not really totally from uh, Lebanon. Uh, and he's probably the one who's working the hardest to, to be from Lebanon. Uh, and there's the... Um, Mm, the female character who's living abroad, uh, divorced, and uh, she's homesick, uh, but she doesn't go back. She's now part of this new society, so with a daughter, and she's part of that new society. And uh, so, if you could talk a little bit about these different identities and these different uh, shades of being a migrant or living abroad. Sure. I mean, so every every the, the, the main approach for me when the, in this film is. What, what the lack of love can, can, can achieve. Because when we all travel, there's, and it's, we end up with some sort of a void. I mean, that's, in, that's inevitable. And every character in the film has a void that they're dealing with, um, which is uh, really centered on, on a lack, um, on the concept of love and the lack of it and how that motivates us. So for example, like you said, um, the Ansaf, which is the woman who lives alone, she's, she's been living in Paris. She's Lebanese, but she's been living in Paris for quite a long time. Her husband left her and he, she's living alone. And there's a void in her life and she's, and, and, and she's looking for something. She's, she's searching for it. And she latches on to whatever she can achieve, whatever she can get um, through, that, through that lack. Same thing with the restaurant owner, um, Jean. He's uh, someone who lives a total, um, it's kind of like in denial. He's living a, a, an existence that's in denial based on this nostalgia that he has that's imagined. And it originates also from a lack of love. He was adopted. He's um, by, uh, in France, but he's Lebanese and he has that yearning for it. So it's, everybody's yearning, yearning for something, just like Adnan is yearning um, for a connection that he, or a, a lost youth or a lot, something lost that he's trying to find, but he can't really verbalize it. So he projects it. Yeah. Um, and uh, also the character Mathilde, who he uh, has, you know, they have a kind of little quick affair. She's uh, also, and uh, there's, a, there's a lack of love. She's alone. She says she's an independent woman, but you can clearly see that everybody needs a companion. Everybody needs somebody. And um, that's what I was looking for. The only one that actually is, I would say, confident with herself and centered is Leila. She's kind of the, um, and she's the young person that's just herself and content, and that's what drives him a little bit crazy. So, and there's a, there's something that, when watching the film, um, one immediately establishes a very strong emotion, emotional connection with the main character because. Um, he's a very funny character, first of all. Right from the start, you can kind of uh, get along with him because he's really funny, he's really nice, he's very... Um, but at the same time, as the story develops, as the character evolves and we get to know him better, there's such a strong melancholy in the character that really hits you. Um, because as you said, he's looking for something, but he doesn't know exactly what. It seems like it's something that he's lost, that it's gone already, and he's trying to catch up on something that that it's already behind him, that he probably had to do before, because now he's married, he's got a son, he's never traveled before, he's never experienced life outside of Lebanon. And now it's like a, um, it's like a sort of overdose of experiences and he doesn't know how to control them anymore, he's spinning. And uh, so that's also something very interesting in the film, uh, the sense of being lost by going out at sea to discover something and you just end up realizing that the sea is bigger than you thought it was. And uh, it's much, much harder to find what you were looking for if you don't have a clear idea of what it was. Um, so on that note, uh, actually, what was your personal experience 
um, especially going back to your country and bringing all your, um, let's say, all your baggage of experiences of studies you've done abroad and work that you've done abroad as well and go back to your country to look at where you come from with a different eye probably, with a, with a more, more uh, with a renewed eye on where you come from, on your origins, and how did you approach it? I mean, that's, that's interesting. I mean, my, I would say like my home, my, who, my, my home is, uh, again, like what the film says, is where my family is. And my, fam my family is in Lebanon. And that is really, and, and my relationship with that has always, has always been in rel relative to, to my travels. So I would, and, but earlier on when I used to travel, when I was in college and then when I worked away, I would feel, sometimes I'd feel, uh, I would reject Lebanon, I would say. I, I, don't, I don't feel like I belong there. I belong in America. I feel American. I feel, or I feel European. And, and, but every time I come back, I always have this warmth that I feel. And I'm wondering, is what? But what is it? Is it the country or is it my family? Yeah. And it's 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 it is my family. It's where you set up your family. It's where you and that really that's that's been my 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 main struggle with it. And it's and I, and as I get older, I feel I I'm, a, I'm I think I'm a bit more aware that that is really where it is. It's home is where the family is. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know how much I can go into details or I can tell about the story, but that's a little bit what happens also with the main character. Um, and that's what probably is the circle of life, like, you know, leaving home in order to come back home and appreciating even more um, where you actually come from. Um, the, the character of Layla is very interesting in my opinion. It's a... Uh, mm, it's it's a sort of um, character that has a, a, has and doesn't have a culture, in a way, because it's she's in the middle. Um, how would you define her? Like, how would you? Is she French? Is she like based on her heritage on the way she was brought up by her mother? She could be Lebanese. But food, the mm, customs, the language, the, mm, the, the, the the impositions also of the mother, which is pretty strict, pretty. Um, but then society, on the other hand, the people she hangs out with, uh, she surrounds herself with, the intelligentsia uh, from the university, from that's a whole different story. That's a whole different world. The uh, it, it feels at times like she decides to surround herself intentionally with those people to get away from um, where her mother was trying to put her. So how would you define her, actually, that character? How would you define her uh, psychology and will and uh, cultural space as well? Well, she, Leila is kind of a... Leila and her mother go hand in hand. Leila and Insaf her, go hand in hand. And Insaf is a woman who's very, very traditional. She's, um, she tries very hard to preserve her culture, um, she's but she's lonely at the same time. Leila, on the other hand, is a reaction to her mother. And at the same time, Leila, her father, um, does, is not with her. So there's a kind of um, a resentment on that fear, which is an abandonment. That is also back to the lack of love. So like you said, it's very true. She does surround herself, but she's an independent woman. She's like, there's in Paris and, and, a lot, and all over the world, you know, she's a young, independent woman. She has no, inhi you know, no inhibitions. She's free to do what she feels like. She's confident. And, um, and she lives her life. Now, she, but she is proud to be what, what she is. I mean, she doesn't reject being Lebanese at all. She says that, uh, she misses the Lebanese, the smell of, she has this nostalgia for Lebanon, so she's proud of her origins, but at the same time in this world, people start to blend in and she's very adaptable, and she's, ad and she's adapted to the society that she's in. And she is one of the few that have actually adapted. Her mother can't adapt, uh, Jean can't adapt, Adnan can't adapt. Um, and so she's somebody who's proud of where she is, but has fully adapted, but is also at the same time rebellious against her mother, um, because she's so strict. and. 
I don't know if it's just my uh, feeling, but uh, in the obsession that the main character has towards her, I can see a little bit, a, a little bit of jealousy in a sense of it kind of feels like he would love to have that opportunity to actually be that open. I'm not going to talk about a specific scene that happens in the film because otherwise it's going to be a spoiler. Uh, but there's a scene in which he goes nuts, basically. And uh, it kind of feels like he's not just trying to protect her, but all that freedom is something that he's never had access to. And it kind of feels like there's a moment of jealousy or a moment of uh, intense desire to be that, to live that and to be part of that, but it's already too late. It's the, the, the moment is already gone. He doesn't, that's not his life anymore. So this, this contraposition, this, this uh, contrast to me even um, highlights even more the melancholy and uh, uh, the struggle of the main character. Uh, and it makes it even more uh, at 360 degrees rounded and, and complex. Um, and that's what's very interesting in a sense because very often when, when watching a road movie or a, a journey or something, there's always the, 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 the risk to be too much about the journey and not enough about the character and who they actually are. Whereas in this film, that doesn't happen at all. Like there's no uh, there's no lack in any department of the uh, of the story. Uh, so we're talking about characters. We're talking about uh, internal and external journey, and we're talking about cultural development uh, in uh, modern times as well. So we have generational conflicts and generational um, contrapositions and uh, comparisons also that we can do. Um, I have just one last question that I would like to ask you and uh, it's probably a simple one, uh, just a curiosity. Uh, why did you choose Paris as a destination, let's say, for him? And um, what is it that, if there's anything that links you to Paris or that just inspired you to choose that place and go and shoot there? Well, that's interesting. I actually don't have any links to Paris. Okay. I'm not French educated. I don't have, um, I've never, I've visited Paris once before I actually did that. But what happened is, is I, the story itself, Paris, first of all, France and, and Lebanon, there is a, it's, they're sister cities. They're reflections of each other. I mean, they even call Beirut the Paris of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Paris has this glamorous, idealistic um, element, not only in Le for the Lebanese, but the whole world, Paris is the most romantic city. Absolutely. And and so I won, and I, saw, I, and I felt, and but what happened is while I was writing, I was writing because my girlfriend was in Paris, so I was writing the script, and while I was writing it, I was in Paris, and I was discovering it myself. So I was writing, I was experiencing this new town, writing the story in, in this new town that I felt. So it was, it was synchronized together. But it also fits with the whole ideal of what Paris stands for, and how I wanted to use Paris um, to kind of flip it on its head a little bit, is, you know, Paris is, it's a romantic city, but when somebody, somebody's experiencing it with that melancholy, that nostalgia, it could turn very dark because everything is a projection of your inner state. And if your inner state is uh, a fearful one or a dark one, you will start to see it in a fearful, dark way. And Paris, I use that in several times where in moments of beauty, it feels joy, joyous. I try to have it feel joyous. And in moments of darkness, it starts to feel kind of dark and heavy. And so that just seemed like the ideal city to, to place it in. Yeah. Like the Kuleshov effect, like yeah. the same uh, image, just uh, with the eyes that you see it and uh, the next shot. And um, on that note, um, Paris does seem to become a sort of self-destructive uh, city for the character and he has to go away. It just feels like it's not safe for him anymore. He just has to go back. Yeah, yeah and uh, stop it with, the, with, with Paris. Um, okay, so on that note, I, I think we, uh, we can wrap it up and uh, we've had a lot of information about the film and uh, today you have the uh, premiere and uh, exactly. the, it's, yeah, and it's already sold out. Yeah. So congratulations on that.
Absolutely. Um, the audience already has a great reception for the for the film. They're very happy about it. And uh, so tonight's the uh, premiere, and uh, good luck for the competition also. Thank you so much. Yeah? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.